Hey guys, how you doing? It's Keptech here bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Um, happy Saturday. And today, I want to go over um, technical questions, IT career questions, IT questions you'll be asked if you're going on a job interview. So, I am going over this. Why am I going over this? Give me a second as I fix my camera. Why am I going over this? It's because um, uh, someone that I know, I helped him with his resume and he got a job recently. And um, actually, he starts next week. So in one week he starts, and basically um, I told him that when you get the job, when you get the job and you, you, you have the job, please send me the interview questions that you're being asked so then I can make videos on that because I want to help people get jobs and I also want to help people how, and explain to them or show them how I would answer technical questions. So I have a list of questions right here on my computer right now that he was asked during the job interview and he told me that um, his questions were kind of difficult, it was really hard. And it does make sense. They are kind of difficult. These are difficult questions you'll be asked because you got to remember that you're an entry-level technician. You're an entry-level guy that's coming out of college or coming out of school or you just probably did hands-on training. And when you get asked these questions, it becomes a very uncomfortable setting for you. So you don't know how to answer these questions. You don't know what to say. And you don't know how to answer it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer all these questions one by one. I'm going to show you how I answer them. And um, I'm going to add this to my playlist. So I have a playlist of job interview questions that I answered. And, and it's going to, I'm going to add that to my playlist. I'm going to add this to my playlist as well. Because people have been asking me uh, what kinds of questions you, you'll be asking in IT. And I tell them every company is different. So he, got, he went on a job interview and they gave him technical questions. And these are the technical questions that he was asked. And obviously I'm going to share what, I'm going to share how I would answer it. So then you're prepared for the job interview. So... If you're new to my channel, um, obviously, uh, I make IT support videos, commentary videos, desktop support videos. I talk about how to get into IT. I do IT interviews as well. So basically, I interview other IP IT people. I go live as well, sometimes here and there. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, hit the notification button down below. That way, you know when I go live. And you could ask me technical questions. You could ask me about how to get into a certain field or a certain job. Um, definitely follow me. Definitely subscribe and rate. Rate, comment, subscribe. I greatly appreciate it. All right. So let's get right into this, all right? So situation questions or scenario questions. How would you approach these examples? Question number one, a user calls in and is unable, uh, a user calls in and is unable to send and receive emails. How will you troubleshoot that, uh, Kevin? All right, so if someone's having an issue with send and receive on their computer, first thing I wanna know is if they're having issues with send and receive, I wanna know if they have internet on the computer, but it also could be a bunch of things. They can't send and receive emails, Usually it's because their account is locked out. It could also mean that the computer has no internet. So I want to know if they have internet on their computer. So I would tell them to go open up the web browser, go to google.com. Are they able to go to google.com? If it does, Just because they're not tech savvy, they're not going to understand if I tell them in technical jargon, obviously. So I'm like, excuse me. Um, good morning, IT. Kevin speaking. Yeah, good morning, sir. How you doing? Um, you're having send and receive email issues? Yes. I, I need you to do me a favor. Can you go into Google Chrome? I just want to see if you have internet. Can you go to google.com? Are you able to go to google.com? No, that's not working. All right, so we're having internet issues. Are you able to open? Are you able to open up another website like YouTube or something or any any type of website? No, it doesn't work. All right, I, ha I might have. We might have a uh, internet issue on your computer. Um, seems like you, there's something wrong on the bottom right hand side. Is there a yellow triangle? By the way, there is a yellow triangle. Oh, you're having in uh, you have internet issues. Uh, is it just you that's having this issue or are there a bunch of people in the office having this issue, this issue? Can you can please let me know? Um, no, it's just you. You're having that issue. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to make you to do this, but is, I, I, do you have any Excel files or Word documents open right now? You don't? Is it okay for you to restart right now and just save everything down before you restart? Can you restart your computer? That sounds like you might have some internet issues with that. With that, that might fix it. Can we try that? Uh, you can't? Alright, just restart. Is your internet working now on your computer? It is? Good. You able to log in? Yes, good. Um, is your Outlook working? It is working. So it might be that issue. It might be an issue where, where you might have to restart the computer and you can't get on their machine, so you might have to restart and that might fix the send and receive issue. Uh, obviously, their account is locked out. They, they can have send and receive issues too. Also, it could be their mailbox is full, so we have a certain amount of emails you could keep on your on your um, Outlook profile. Um, if that mailbox is full, it'll reach a certain limit. It would say your mailbox is full. Uh, you you would not be able to send and receive emails. Your mailbox is full. 
you have to contact your sysadmin and they have to extend the mailbox. And then once they extend the mailbox, then he's able to send and receive emails. That's scenario number two. Scenario number three will be is that his Outlook profile is corrupted. So you might have to go into the start menu on the bottom left hand, left hand side, type control panel, obviously close out of Outlook, type control panel, go into mail, change the categories to small, click mail, click new profile, put a new profile name in there and they put that it always opens by default on this new profile then click Outlook and let Outlook open it will recreate the Outlook profile on his computer and then see if he can send and receive emails after that and if he can then that will fix that problem but then you have to let him know when you create an Outlook profile that's brand new that he's gonna have trouble searching and then Outlook might be a little bit slow because it's recreating the whole Outlook profile so obviously you gotta tell him that you know it's gonna be a little slow and you might not be able to search for stuff. You might have to wait for it to re-index. So basically what that means is basically that um, the, the profile is trying to fix the search engine. So once it fixes that, then you'll be able to search normally again. So I'll, it depends how big your mailbox is. If you have a small mailbox, then it will not take that long. If you have a big mailbox, then it will take a while. So that's how I would answer that question. Question number two. A user is unable to complete a training on video, so the video will not load. So that sounds like a driver issue, so that might be a device manager. I had this issue before. I had this issue like one week ago. So um, a user had um, the video will not load is because their, their sound settings weren't working. So I had to uninstall, reinstall device manager. How did I do that? I typed computer management. I did open file location computer management. I right clicked computer management. I ran as admin. I, I, I scrolled all the way down from groups to event viewer and everything. I scrolled all the way down to device manager. I uninstalled sound settings. I reinstalled sound settings. It prompted me to restart. I restarted the computer and then the web browser and the sound worked after that. That might be that issue. Another issue, another way to fix that issue or that video is not loading it might be the other issue where basically they're using Internet Explorer. You might have to clear cookies and cache and see if that fixes it. And then reload the website or the web page. Refresh the website and web page and you should be good after that. You would go into internet options, history, delete history, delete cookies and cache. And that might fix that issue. Another another way to fix that issue might be that web, web browser itself is corrupted. You might have to go into restore or reset settings all the way towards the last tab on uh, internet options. Hit restore settings, reset, reset IE, and it would say um, you have to restart IE for it to take effect. You reset IE, you turn the, uh, you close IE, uh, you close IE, and then you reopen it again and go back to the website. So that's for IE. For Chrome, same thing. Clear cookies and cache. Type in settings. Go into cookies and cache. Clear history, browser history. Um, either that, or you might have to re reset the whole Chrome browser. So you might have to type reset in search settings inside of settings. Reset the browser and that might fix the problem. Another thing would be is that you want to see if it works on IE. If it doesn't work in IE, tell them to go into Chrome. If it doesn't work in Chrome, tell them to go to IE. You know, vice versa. So it might be a web browser issue. So it might work on IE. It might not work on IE. It might be not compatible with IE. That video that you're trying to load might need Java. So it might be, it might work good. It might need Java and Silverlight. So it might wanna, you might wanna have that load on IE because it has server light and, and it has server light in Java. You might have an issue where it might have Adobe Flash Player and Adobe Flash Player only works on Chrome. So you might have to tell them to go to Chrome instead, and then you have to allow Chrome and Chrome settings and click allow Chrome and settings, and then the, the the video loads after that. So that's how I would answer that question. So it depends on the scenario, but. That's how I would answer that. It's like, there's all the ways to fix that problem. There's a lot of ways to fix that problem. Um, a user is unable to log into a computer. That's typically an issue where the computer is not on. Um, computer is not on. Um, the user account, uh, the, try, the person is trying to log in, their account is locked out. They, um, they just changed their password. Their password needs to be reset, so their account is locked out. It'll be three. Number four is the computer probably is no longer on DNS. That means it doesn't have an internet. It has no internet, so no one can log in. That means it lost, it fell off the domain. So basically, what that means is it, it it's no longer on Active Directory or it's no longer on the domain. So you might have to you might have to log in as a local admin, local administrator, um, remove it from the domain and re-add it from the domain. It could be that issue too. But you're just not able to log in. It's because the computer's not on. It, it, it's that's the that's the best that's the best answer for that. The computer is not on. If the computer they can't log in, it's because the computer is just not on. That's basically what it is. Or you might have to restart the computer. Maybe it's stuck on a Windows update or something. So, three number three number four, users only able to access certain um, .mi sites. All other sites providing access denied. That's typically an issue where you have to allow the site 
So you go into IE, Internet Options, you grab the site URL, and then you put in Internet Options, allow the site, click OK, OK, Apply, and then restart the um, uh, restart IE or refresh IE, and then the website will work after that. It might require a certificate as well. You don't know these websites require certificates, so they might require you to install a certificate for the website to properly work. Um, that's number two. Number three would be is that the website is fully blocked by your network admin. How do you test that? Um, you take the website. Um, you take the website. You go on your. You go on the website yourself and see if you're able to access it. If you're not able to access it, he's not able to access it. That means there's a network issue. There's something going on with the network. How do you test it even further more? Um, you go into your phone. Um, if your phone is on company Wi-Fi, take it off of company Wi-Fi. You go on the website on your phone without being on company Wi-Fi and if it works on your phone that means that the company is blocking it that means the network admin team is blocking it so you might want to reach out to your network admin team and see what they're blocking you know they might be blocking it so that means that that's what's going on right now with that with that website it could be that as well and it could be a bunch of other things and that's how I would answer that question all right question number five users unable to open unencrypted uh, emails so that sounds like a, that sounds like a like a, a WinRAR 7 zip program uh, problem so when someone's not able to open up an encrypted email typically it's because they encrypted it with with uh, with a zip file so you might have to un you might have to install WinRAR or you might have to install 7-zip and then right click on it and extract file and it'll prompt you for the password it could be that um, encrypted emails it could be that it could also be it could also mean the encrypted email might require you to um, I see encrypted emails that it might require you to log into IE and then put in the password or put in put in the login and then you're able to unencrypt it after that. So it depends what kind of encryption file it is. This is encrypted emails, but I've seen people where they get encrypted emails and they click on the link and the link takes them to IE. And then when they go into IE, they have to log in with their username and password. And then when they log in with the username and password, they're able to unencrypt the file and able to download the PDF file or whatever file it is. So it could be a bunch of different things, but that's how I would answer that question. Number six, a user logging into a computer, the user is able to log into a temporary file. when they lever So whenever they log in, they log into a temporary profile. I've seen that issue before. You have no idea how many times I've seen that issue. Usually, it's it's a computer issue. Sometimes it's an issue where the computer is um, um, it was not imaged properly. So basically, when you build a computer from beginning to the end, the computer is corrupted. You might have to re-image the whole computer. But how would I fix that issue for the user? Basically, what I would do from step one to step Z, step A to Z. First thing I would do is I will log. I will have them log in with the temp profile, whatever it is. Um, I back up their desktop, I back up their downloads, I back up their do their documents, I back up anything that we don't back up basically. Then after that, after that, this is what I would do. After that, I get a snippet, so I do the snippet snipping tool. I take a snippet of the whole desktop, so I, that way I know where all the icons are, where the, where the icons are, like the Excel, Word, PowerPoint, bookmarks. I take a snapshot of that, I will save that as well. Then after that, I would go into Chrome and IE. I would save their bookmarks on Chrome and IE on their shared drive. Then after that, I would go into Control Panel. So I would go into Start Menu on the bottom left-hand side. I type Control Panel. I go to Devices and Printers. And I would take a snippet of their printers and save that at screenshot as well. So after, I do, after I'm done with all that, because I'm not sure if any of these things are getting backed up, I would do all, after doing all that, I would log log off. I would have him log off. I log in. I go into um, this this PC or my, or my computer. Right click on it. Go into properties. Go into system settings. Go into user the user profiles. I would delete the temp profile and I would delete his profile because when you have a temp profile, usually it has two profiles. You have you have his OC his his uh, old old domain profile, whatever it is, his domain profile. It could be whatever. And then you have his other you have his old you have his, you have his profile. And you have a, a temporary file. You want to delete both of those. You delete both of those. You restart the computer. You might have to run. Um, you might have to run a CMD command. There's a CMD command to clear um, profiles. That's one way to fix it. And then the other way to fix it is if you go into RegEdit and you delete the profile in RegEdit. I don't remember what the path is, but basically you go into RegEdit and delete the profile, delete the roaming profile in RegEdit. Then when you do all that, you restart the computer. You have him log in again. Have him log in like at least two times just in case. So I have him log in. 
See if there's a temporary profile. There's not. Have him log off. Have him log in again just in case. And if it's still working, if it's working, you know, it's working good. Then when you have him log in, um, you go back on his computer. You put back his documents. You put back his downloads. You put back anything you have on his desktop. You put that back. Um, you open up your snippet of the desktop. You copy whatever he had before. So if you had like Adobe, Acrobat, Excel, Outlook, Word on the bottom of the taskbar as a shortcut. You put all that back. Then after that, you open up the you open up the the snippet. You open up the snippet of the devices and printers. You go into Control Panel. You open up Devices and Printers, and you start adding back all the printers that you had in the snippet. You add all the printers back. Then after you do that, you go into Chrome and IE, and you put back all the bookmarks. You import all the bookmarks in in um in Internet Options, um obviously, uh, Bookmark Manager for Chrome. You put everything back. And then you have you, you map his share drives if you had any share drives, you map any shortcuts if you had any shortcuts, and then after that you're good to go after that. And that's how I would that's how I would answer that question. I know that's a lot of information to obtain, but that's basically how I would answer all these scenario questions. So this is a really long video. I'm sorry about that. Um, hopefully this helps you out in some shape or form. I hope you guys have a great day. As always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. I greatly appreciate it. I am going to put a screenshot of it, and I am going to put the, the questions below in the description just so you can have a look at it. And I hope this video helps you out. All right, guys? I hope you guys have a good day. Take care. Peace. Later. Bye.